Hello everyone, my name is Ditex, CTO at DVS. Welcome to another how-to video, kindly sponsored by Seagate. Don't forget to like, bing, subscribe, bing. I know Jake won't add him, so I gotta make him do, do his job for him. This week, we're gonna take a look at the new GUI 4 firmware for the iSeries NVR. Now, it's not just any uh, GUI 4, this is High Vision GUI 4. Um, it's got IoT application in there, it's really, really exciting, it's got some lovely updates, so for effort, let's do a, a video on that. Don't forget, we're at IFSEC next week, please stop by and see us. Um, if it's for beer, banter, technical questions, say hello to the team, sign up for an account, or just to pick up a freebie, enter a competition, etc. You might be able to pick up one of these. Um, and for those of you who just want to come by and take a selfie with me, Jake or Mike, you know, feel free to do that. And we'll be available for the three days to do that with you. Right, so GUI 4. We all know what GUI 4 is. We've come to love it. Just want to show you what it looks like from a perspective of the local interface. Whoop. So if you go into business application, you can now see we've got IoT, Internet of Things, access control and alarm and we can set up um, linkage actions with that so if we click on access control we can actually add in on the network our intercoms and video access control equipment it's really really powerful I'm gonna jump on my PC on my web browser and show you how we achieved that because now although they're all like high vision products they're now starting to come together with an i-series NVR you're bringing these separate technologies into one powerful um, networked system. I'll see you in two seconds. Don't go anywhere. Okay, welcome back to the video. Two things you need. You need an i-series recorder, that's a 767 9000 series on the appropriate firmware, which I'll show you now. You also need some access devices, whether it's an IP terminal, access terminal, fingerprint terminal, face recognition terminal, the ACU, IP ACU on the network, or the video intercom, which I'll show you how to add these in a minute, but you do need a combination of both. First thing we're gonna do is log into the recorder. Okay. Some really niche updates in this, or nice updates. Under configuration, first thing you need to do is go to local and make sure you've set the POS OSD as enabled. So when this text off the network, you know, the IoT events come in, you can see them on a web browser. If you don't do that, you'll be wondering why you can't see them. Okay, under system, you will see that there is the current firmware that supports the IoT build. Anything pr after this should support it, anything previous won't. So please, please use that version or above. Some really nice little updates in this. Again, under live view settings, that function remains in there, very handy function. It enables you to select the output, what screen split you want, if you wanted to do to all time, and then select what cameras go on what's um, in, in what order, click save. So it's a way of you changing the screen remotely for the customer without having to go to site, presuming that the machine is externally accessible. Really handy feature, so make use of it. Under maintenance, we've got a diagnosis tool, so you can follow all of this. It gives you some really useful exportable diagnosis material for us. Under security, we've added some new functions. So we've got access restriction settings. So allowed IP address restriction or MAC address restriction, forbidden or allowed, and you can add them in appropriately. Security service is still there. Default IP camera, trusted root certification authorities, and this lovely, lovely new one, double verification configuration. Click on that, you enable it, add a user in, which I have there, but you click add, Fill a username, admin password to the NVR, password of this user, and then what verifications they're allowed to verify, uh, whether it's local playback, video export, and remote video and playback. Click on OK, and we'll cancel it. I've already added a user in there. What this functionality does is it allows us to set a user up of the machine to, if they want to have playback or export locally or remotely, they need a second user to verify this. In some countries like Germany, that's already a process. It looks like it may be coming in for more, but it's an added security step. 
really, really nice function. So how you set this up is first set the user up in here. There's allowed to authenticate a, 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 a double verification user. Then under user management, you add a user in. So I've added this test one here and I'm gonna click modify. If I then select local live view or remote playback even, we'll go to remote, uh, da, 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 where are you? So remote playback download, click on that. You can select what they are allowed to see anyway. And then you'll see double, full, double verification user. If that's enabled and any of the cameras are enabled in there, that camera will need authenticating by the user you set up in the first step. To show you how this works, if I log out and click OK, I'm going to log in with this user. Go to playback. Select the camera. Click play. There we go. It's asked me to verify it. That's the one user I set up earlier. I'll verify that. Click on OK. Now I can play and export it back. Without that verification process, they're not allowed to download or view footage. There you have it, lovely little feature. Hope you can enjoy that. Okay, back to configuration. Some more features in here. Uh, nothing's changed there, nothing's changed there. Okay, nothing. We've added smooth streaming. Um, some devices support that. Uh, it allows us to get a there's a whole document on it. I'll send you the document, but it's um, it's a nice little function like the transcoded stream. If you've got really bad upload bandwidth off site, then it makes a, a, a stream of that. Next one down is, oh, most of them haven't changed. In fact, we do have, so now on this version firmware, the IDS TCM cameras, which I did a video for last week, the data is now searchable through this. So bing, done. Okay. Next one down, you'll see that IoT channel settings. If I click on that, that gives us a new menu. So you've got access control device, alarm device, and IoT event device. So if I click alarm device and click add, that allows us to select the Hike Vision, Optex, GJD, or Luminite. So all of the custom firmware we had before for Optex, GD, GJ, GJD, that's it, and Luminite, and now included in the IoT, IoT build. So I'd select my um, detector preference, give it the IP address, transfer protocol, click OK, and then I'd set the event up. So now we can start to pull event information from these 30 third party devices in this baseline firmware. So, bing, great job, Hike Vision. That's really going to help a lot of people. So currently we are supporting Hike Vision devices, Optex, GJT and Luminite. Uh, I'm sure there's many more to come. We'll do a separate one on that. Under access control device, I can click add. Currently is only height vision. If you know the details, you can input them directly or as I like to do, quick click, quick add. It'll scan my network, see my access control devices. I've got quite a few in here. In here. So I'm gonna add in a uh, fingerprint, QR code, access control reader. So I'm going to add that in, click on OK. Go back. That should be offline because the password is wrong. Click modify. Type the correct password in. And hopefully this is the correct password. Oops. Okay, done. Go back to there, still connecting. Online, that device is now online. I'm also going to add in, by click add, let's choose another device. Let's choose the video intercom device. So this one here, click add, click OK. Invalid operation, that's because I know why. Quick add. Oh, let's try a different unit then. A KDO803. 
new modular intercom. Yeah, we can try that. Add in succeeded. Uh, I need to change the password on this one. Hopefully. Hopefully it's this password. There we go, two online devices. So I've added the modular intercom call station, um, the master station, which I've got on the network over there. Another video to follow on that. It's a great bit of equipment. I'm waiting until after if sex so I can get all my equipment pieces back and do a video on it. So for now, we've added the fingerprint QR access IP terminal, doorbell, whatever you want to call it, and the modular intercom. What do we do then? So a couple of things we can do. So if we take the um, access control uh, unit, click configuration, and it takes us to the IoT event configuration down the bottom there. So it's an access control device. What we need to do now is set up um, the camera name. So I put his card past. We can put this as um, IP fingerprint terminal, terminal, IP uh, QR access terminal. There we go, that's better. Click save, you can put whatever you want in there. So this is how you set this up. So arm in schedule, enable 24 seven, unless you want it on a, a schedule of your choice. Linkage method is quite important. Under linkage method, you have to tick OSD display, and you can tick any of these other relevant things here. But you also have to associate a camera with this. In here, we're going to associate camera four. Now, let's just choose camera four. So click OK, saved. Then we choose the event type. So there's a full list of events that this IoT device supports. Authentication passed, failed, door open, door closed, door exception, etc, etc, etc. Each one is enabled by default. If there's one you don't want to come up on the event list, is it inappropriate or, irrelevant, or irrelevant, you could say alarm recovered, for instance. I don't want that to appear. Untick enable, click save. That particular event from this device is now disabled, where the rest of them are still enabled. Under OSD configuration, It'll link to that camera directly. So this is the, that's a spy hole camera. So I choose where my text needs to be. So if I put that in the middle of the screen, I device name, card number, you can untick or tick these as needed, what you feel is appropriate. You can change the text, where it appears, the size of it, etc., and how long it stays there. I'm happy with that. Now click save. So what we'll do for the next one is Go back here, select this one here, go configuration. And now we're on IoT device two, that's the one we added in second. Again, access control device. So we will put in there, uh, unlock by householder. So they're all ticked, all there, uh, all done. So unlock by householder, so we're gonna associate camera six with that and click OK. And we're also going to do unlock by oh, device intercom. There we go. Tick six again. So you see how you can build this up. Go to OSD configuration. That will link to that camera. Oop, when you actually click it, that is. Goes to camera six. Oh, it's a fisheye camera. Um, that's fine. Again, select the characters where you want it to be. Let's put that in the middle of the screen there so you can do it. Click save. Um, and then again, we should be ready to go. So I'm going to go to live view. First camera we're going to look at in live view is this one. Which is linked to the QR code scanner. Don't forget, that's the one. So if I open up my app. I've got the QR code, QR code, which I downloaded from the IMS 4200 configuration. Remember, I've done a separate video on this. If you want to see how we can use QR codes as access control, see this here. That is one of the devices. 
It'll take a little bit, a minute. That's one of the devices on the network, similar. It's fitted over there. You should see the details of this come up. Authenticated. There you go. So you saw on the screen that event is authentication passed. Tells you my card number. And it tells you all of the details. That is ingrained in the image. So if you do a playback, it'll be in there. Uh, which is also nice because if you've got events looking at intercoms or doors, it gives you that extra detail, especially for access control, that additional information. Maybe you don't know who the card holder was because you don't have the relevant details or someone has lost their card, but the video will link to that. So it was very easy to do that linkage action. So that's one side of it. What we'll do now is go to the fish eye why we're talking about fish eyes just so you know I got a brand new um, 12 megapixel fish eye with Imavision lens been driving this for a long time really excited to finally get it it's gonna be available very very soon I'm gonna do another video on that but if you're at IFSEC stop by Hype Vision we'll have that on the stand Imavision if you don't know gives a very good D-Warp much better detail better D-Warp so what we'll do now on this is do the modular intercom. So, so there we go, that's the alarm. It shows the intercom's been initialized. I'm going to answer the call. And I'm going to unlock the door. Unlock by Householder. So you can see all of the events, even from the modular intercom. So when the call was made, who unlocked it, whether it was the Householder, whether it was a card or pin. So it gives you that additional information. And maybe they're not telling the truth, but the system has recorded that action. So it really will help not only give you additional security, but help you find events that have happened on there. So hoping you found that really, really useful and you can find some very imaginative uses for it. If you've got any questions, like always, drop us an email, come and see us, contact our sales staff. We're always here to help you and hopefully you're really enjoying these videos. Keep liking, commenting, sharing, and don't forget, come and see us at IFSEC. We'll have a beer together. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.